I know that many of you have read that wonderful diary written by Anne Frank. Between 1942 and 1944, she, a young Jewish girl, began to write on her 13th birthday from the annex of her father's business place. For over two years, she recorded what it was like to be living in seclusion and in secret for fear of being captured by the Nazis. She spoke of her hopes and her dreams for the future. And of course, you know that in August of 1944, she and her family and a small group of friends were found hiding and they were taken off and Anne would eventually die in Bergen and Belsen. The diary that she wrote is like one of those rocks on which we can put our hand and say, this is what war is. Is stealing the hopes and the dreams and the future of a child. And it's done over and over and over again. And with every remembrance of every life lost or diminished, we recommit ourselves to peace and conciliation and understanding. Second thing the church has to offer the meaningful remembrance of a wonderful future is the sense that those people who suffered and died throughout history in war sacrificed. They were raised up towards a great effort. They gave all that they had and in doing so ensured that we would have a future and a hope. When we look at their sacrifice and their effort, each one of us has to say to ourselves, am I making sufficient sacrifice from my life? Am I putting forward a strong enough effort that I am changing and helping humankind? It's what we do through all of our mission in the church, locally, nationally, and internationally. But each one of us needs to say all the time, does my effort come up to the level of the effort of those who went before me? A third thing the church has to offer to the world, of course, is the message of the primacy of love. The need for forgiveness, grace, and mercy. The ability to set aside wrong and give people a second chance. The idea that love can change the world. It's not a corny or a shallow or a foolish idea. It is a deep but powerful and significant idea. And we, by our love, can change the little bit of the world close to us. And we can change the whole world near and far. Sometimes out of the midst of terrible war, there arrive stories of wonderful healing and peace and reconciliation, which can be a great inspiration to all of humankind. One of my favorite stories of mercy and love comes out of the Second World War from a man by the name of Colonel Richard Moore. He was injured and captured on February 17, 1943. And along with over 700 other British and American soldiers, forced to march to a Japanese prison camp in Tong Chan. Of the over 700 who set out, only about 140 survived even the march to get to the camp. There they were tormented, they were humiliated and degraded and abused. But then strangely there came to a camp a new commandant by the name of Major Sakata. Major Sakata had compassion and he along with his corporal, Corporal Sushi, did all that they could to create humanitarian circumstances in the midst of a terrible place. While Sakata was the commandant of that camp, the war came to an end. And the day came when he went to Colonel Richard Moore, who was the ranking officer amongst the prisoners of war, 
and he handed his weapon over to him and said, you are now in charge of this camp. The soldiers who had been holding the British and American prisoner were now themselves taken prisoner as they all waited for whatever the fallout would be following the conflict. Eventually, a tribunal was struck in Tokyo through which to try all of the officers of the Japanese army. And one of the members of that tribunal was Colonel Richard Moore. And of course, as the Japanese officers were brought forward, you can well imagine that with war being so close, it was the opinion and the verdict of most of the 12 members that every one of those officers should hang for their crimes. But eventually, Sakata, who had been the commandant of the prisoner of war camp, was brought forward. And Richard Moore remembered his mercy and his grace. And even though other members of the tribunal argued for him to be hanged immediately, Richard Moore pleaded for forgiveness and understanding and mercy. Major Sakata's sentence of death was commuted to life in prison, along with Corporal Sushi. And eventually the Allied forces, five years after that, said that five years was sufficient and with grace and mercy, let those prisoners go free. What Richard Moore did was a wonderful act of kindness and goodness. It's a miracle that he could have done so coming out of a context of such hurt. Of course, there was hurt perpetrated by all sides. Richard Moore would go on to be ordained within the Church of England and eventually become the Bishop of Taunton. Uh, and strangely enough, uh, Major Sakata and Corporal Sushi would go on to found the largest electronics company in Japan. Uh, it's amazing what productivity and what grace and what wonders can emerge when someone speaks for forgiveness and love and understanding and compassion, it is beautiful. The war is filled with stories like that of people who chose not to be vengeful or prejudicial. People who said, look, it was war. We all did things that we are ashamed of. Let's start again with mercy. That attitude is summed up in the reading that we heard this morning in which God says to love it. Let us love one another. For love is of God. And whoever loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. For God is love. What the church has to offer on Remembrance Sunday Remembrance itself, which heals our souls. An understanding that each one of us must sacrifice and put forward a huge effort to honor those who have gone on before. And a voice that says, forgive, show mercy, let God's love flow. If we do those things, then there is hope for the seven billion, hope for all of humankind, for a future filled with goodness, healing, and grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.